this, 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 this show is brought to you by Safety FM. Before we jump into this thing, make sure you head over to the website, www.thehopnerd.com. Follow along on all things social media at The Hop Nerd, except for Twitter because it is super duper special. It is The Hop Nerd One. Send me a text message, give me a call, leave me a voicemail in this handy dandy Hop Nerd phone number that's listed below. Make sure you send me an email, sam at thehopnerd.com or thehopnerd at gmail.com. Having that conversation with you is the best part of this entire thing. I believe through those conversations is how we make the world a better place to work. Today is super duper awesome because we have the one, the only, the Pedro Maciel on the show. Um, it took a while for Pedro and I to connect, but we finally made it happen. Uh, I won't keep you here too much. Here's me and Pedro talking about all things safety. So I am joined today by the one and only Pedro Maciel. I just asked him to make sure I was pronouncing that right. I wanted to make sure that I was not uh, butchering his last name. And, and I'm, I'm getting nods of approval, I hope. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that's the, <laughs> that's the correct yes. way to say it. How are you doing today, Pedro? Good, good. Thanks for having me on the show, Sam. No, man, it is absolutely my pleasure. I, I reached out to you a while back and was hoping to get you on and everything worked out. And here you are. Um, so this is really, really awesome. Do you, uh, care to jump in and, and introduce yourself a little bit to everybody? Yeah. I, hi everybody. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, Pedro Maciel. I am a, an avid safety professional, very passionate what we do. Um, I'm also a podcast host, but we'll get into that uh, a little bit later. Uh, I've been doing safety for about 10 years. I uh, got into it from a labor standpoint, um, got into it being a general laborer and got asked, Hey, I need you to be the safety guy. And that's how I ended up in the safety role. And here we are 10 years later, um, you know, going strong. Let me, let me, let me throw this one out to you. Um, what was that like when you, when you got your first safety gig, um, and they're like, Hey, you're the safety guy. How how was that? <laughs> it was very interesting because, mind you, I was a laborer. I was going in confined space, uh, confined spaces, and doing a lot of grunt work in the chemical plants down in Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, so when they asked me, they thought I had the potential to be the safety guy for this one turnaround. So I said yes. I seen all the safety guys walking around, handing out you know the the gold dollars for for good things and then you know drinking coffee and, and eating donuts and i was like <laughs> man i can do that right. so I, I took that role and, and seen that and then just getting to know those individuals that that were there at the time that were you know my, my counter my counterparts and co-workers uh I, I grew a great passion for safety and you realize why they drink so much coffee now right Yes. <laughs> we, yes. We keep we keep the uh, coffee roasters in business and the producers of midnight oil in business. That's that's kind of <laughs> kind of what yes. we do, right? Yes, so, we do. So since since that kind of day one um jump into safety, um how have you evolved? What are the biggest lessons that you have kind of learned since you started out? What would you go back uh and tell a young Pedro 10 years ago jumping into this profession for the first time? speak up, believe it or not, speak up. Uh, you know, when you're new into the field, new into the industry as a safety professional, uh, you're kind of trying to put your best foot forward and, and try to make the best, you know, put your name out there and do the best job that you can. And, you know, you get hit with a lot of, um, you know, we've always done it that way. And, you know, I'm not going to listen to a kid and, mm. you know, a, a younger guy. Uh, but yes, definitely speak up and, you know, put your foot down in a sense to where you get your point across and, and you're able to save those lives. Because, again, it could be a life you're saving um, or a life that ends up getting hurt if you don't speak up. 
That that's huge. Um, some folks out there, folks that don't know me extremely well, probably have a hard time believing this. But I think that's an amazing advice because when I first started into this profession, I was kind of a quiet person. Um, I, I know, whew, big surprise, right? <laughs> screaming into a microphone yeah. now. But I was I was kind of a quiet person, and it took me quite a while to find that voice. Um, so yeah, that's, that's huge. I think that's, that's great advice to give folks is to speak up. Um, don't be afraid to challenge and, and, and be a dissenting voice and, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, any pro tips for folks? I mean, in and around that, how, how can they, uh, how can they do that a little bit better or any, any just general pro tips for folks that are wanting to kind of get into safety or, or make a career out of this stuff? You got to know what you're talking about. Yeah, I definitely got to know what you're talking about. Now, granted, you can go and try to, um, you know, put your foot down and speak up and make your challenges, but make sure you're, you're, you're educated in, in what you're talking about. Um, you know, that's definitely pro tip number one. Number two, ask a lot of questions from those individuals that are telling you, we've always done it that way. Ask the questions. Well, why have you done it that way? Right. You know, what makes you do it that way? Is it easier? Is it more feasible? Is it less uh, hazardous? Uh, because you'll learn a lot out in the field from those veterans that have always done it that way for the past 20 years. Um, and, and you gain a lot of experience. And don't, get a, don't, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Put your gloves on and go touch the tools that you're telling your guys to, and, and gals to, to be safe with. Go ahead and put your hands on them so you get familiar with them. I, I think that that's phenomenal. I mean, going out and, and people that listen to me quite a bit, they know um, I'm always preaching about being curious, right? So just going out mm -hmm. with that grain of curiosity. And, and I think that's great advice is to go out and learn something from those folks. Ask those folks. There's a reason, right? There's, yeah. there's probably a reason why things are, are done a certain way. Um, and when you go ask and you're curious, sometimes you'll find out that that reason is kind of dumb. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or, or it'll just be that you'll kind of prompt that question and they'll be like, I don't know. And then you ask somebody else, say, well, I don't know. We've just always done it that way. And then you ask 10 or 15 people and they kind of go in this big circle and go, well, there's no reason why we really do it this way. So we can definitely change that. <laughs> you, know, so mm -hmm. you can, you can grow some serious, serious betterment um, just through being curious and asking that question and challenging that mindset that, that how you know, we've always done it this way mindset. So that's, that's super cool. So you produce and host a podcast. Um, it's the X factor of safety, right? Yes, sir. So I've, I've listened to it. It's excellent. It's a great podcast. Um, tell, tell folks out there about that. How can they find it? What do you talk about? What kind of folks do you have on all that kind of fun stuff? Uh, you can find it at all the platforms where you listen to podcasts, Apple podcasts, Spreaker, Spotify. Um, there's a couple others. Um, Castbox. Anywhere you find your podcast, where you listen to this podcast, you can find you know the X Factor of Safety. Um, and how I got into podcasting, uh, it was by chance, by luck. I took a, an idea, recorded it, and decided to have this bright idea. I'm going to go do a podcast. Hmm. Didn't know anything about podcasting. Didn't know anything about you know what I needed to do, how I needed to sound. I just took the idea and ran with it. And, you know, it, it's still in its early stages. I started back in June of last year um, and then just recently hit it, you know, full force coming into 2020. It's one of the things that I told myself in 2019, hey, you need to get your podcast up and rolling. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I've produced, I think it's 11, 12 episodes so far. Cool stuff. Um, so, that is awesome, man. So for folks out there, I think everybody out there probably has listened to or listens to podcasts, right? Um, mm -hmm. There's a ton of them out there, but every, for for the amount of podcasts that are out there, I never really get to meet people um, other than folks like yourself and folks from the Safety Justice League and Dr. J and some of those other folks that we interact with. Um, most folks in my normal day-to-day -day life are like, who the heck makes podcasts, right? You don't, you don't really meet many other fellow podcasters. So for folks right. out there that don't make those things, what, what's that like? How, how would you describe it? Let me put it that way. I've got my own little definition. How, how would you describe it? <laughs> for people that don't make podcasts, but listen to podcasts. Um, yeah, it's, Ooh, got, you kind of stumped me with that one. <laughs> Here's so for people that, that, that don't make podcasts and that are listening to podcasts. Just think about 
the ideas that are running through your head and then being able to just talk into a microphone and then put it out for the world to hear Mm -hmm. and somebody to get back to you and say, Hey, I like that episode or I like that idea you put out there. That's, that's one thing. Um, and, and I asked that question because I think all of us that started down this path had that moment. Um, cause I, I go back and like, I listen to like some of my B roll stuff that never made it out and will mm. never make it out. I mean, there's no <laughs> sum of money that will, <laughs> that will bring that out, right. Uh, and I even go, but you know, you kind of listen, go back and listen to some of your episodes, right? That's what I do. At least I listen to some of mine. And I'll start with like one and kind of work my way through and go, Oh man, I was terrible. And then it kind of starts getting better and better and better. And so for folks out there that don't do it, I, I usually describe it as um, when you first start, you have to have some serious courage to kind mm-hmm. of throw that stuff out there. Uh, because like you mentioned that um, you throw stuff out there and believe it or not, people on the internet aren't very nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> correct. <laughs> They're usually not very nice. And I, I'm I, I, not, I, I don't mean everyone obviously lumped together. Uh, I think to, uh, you know, I think to our, um, I think of it almost like a family, our little like LinkedIn family that everyone kind of groups together on LinkedIn. Um, we have mm-hmm. some amazing conversations on there. There's, there's, um, that's where I was first introduced to you. That's where I was first introduced to a lot of other folks was through LinkedIn. Um, and it's an awesome bunch of people, but every now and again, you get somebody that's like, Hey, your sound quality sucks. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, well, yep. sorry, you come do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that definitely. You know, the, the, the critiques that, right, that, right, that right. you get, when they're not out there trying to do it themselves and we're going to, you're going to get that anywhere, you know, whether it be video, whether it right. be on, on, you know, like, like on Jason Lucas's, you know, social mm-hmm. media safety minute, you know, those types of things. And it's only a minute worth of content, but you're always going to have haters. And that's why right, I started right. using that, that hashtag, uh, haters to likers, right? You got to turn <laughs> your haters into <laughs> likers. So it, it definitely, you know, there's always going to be haters. They're going to come, come and go. And then eventually down the road, they're going to come and ask you, Hey, how'd you do that? Or, you know, how do you get so big podcasting? It's a, it's a huge, it's a huge first step. I think that's yeah. the, that's the piece that I tell people. Um, Cause usually that question is, Hey, what's it like, you know, to, to podcast? The follow up question is, is usually, Hey, I've got an idea for a podcast. Should I do this podcast? And my answer is 99.9% of the time. Yes. Like you totally should mm-hmm. jump on it, put yourself out there, be willing to throw out that content. Um, and just understand that you're, you're being really, um, it, it is you gotta, gotta have some bravery to kind of throw that stuff out there because again, yeah. you're opening up the door to a lot of love and a lot of hate <laughs> all, mm-hmm. at the, all at the same time, all at the same time. Yes. <laughs> is there anything that you would, uh, you would tell people about starting up a podcast? Uh, if you're thinking about starting a podcast, uh, first and foremost, like you had mentioned, Sam, have the courage to do it. If you have an idea, do it, take the first step forward and and start. Cause if you don't start, you're never going to know what possibly could come about. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so just take that first step and actually start. I didn't ever think I was going to make a podcast. I would listen to them and I was like, man, that'd be really cool if I can get a podcast going. And, you know, I finally took that, you know, that leap of faith into myself and put the podcast out there. And, you know, now, it, it's it's starting to grow like crazy, which is a good thing. That is awesome, yeah. Um, and I, yeah, and I'll even throw in there one last kind of thing for folks. That, that kind of what I share with them, my conversations with that is that um, doing the podcasting part, like doing the equipment, doing all the that kind of nerdy stuff in the background, that's probably the easier part of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why I tell people like you don't even have to really have a microphone to start a podcast. I mean, you can record them on your phone. You can do yeah. all kinds of stuff to get started. The harder part, I think, for folks is once you, you really have to find that thing that you're passionate about, that you're willing to talk about a bunch, yep. right? Like a lot, yep. you got to talk about it a lot, like a almost lot. every day, sometimes three or four or five times a day, you're going to be talking about it because you're going to be recording hours and hours and hours of stuff for you talking about that. So make sure it's something that you love. And I, I think that's, that was for me, again, I was kind of same as you. I listened to a bunch of them. I'm like, well, that'd be cool. That'd be neat. Uh, mm-hmm. And out of all the stuff that I had done, I just I wasn't that super passionate about stuff I wanted to talk about until I, you know, I was really involved in human and organizational performance. And then it was that I was like, oh, okay, here it is. This is I can do this for sure. I can talk about this all day, all night. I wake up because I'm mumbling about it in my sleep. Like I can, <laughs> I can definitely do this. So um, that kind of leads us into to some other stuff, which is, 
you know, safety is, is really changing. It's evolving. It's growing at, at a faster and faster rate. Um, and really, we're becoming enlightened to, you know, the ideas of human and organizational performance, human performance improvement, um, all these kind of different schools of, of thought. So with that, safety professionals really are evolving, right? Uh, yes. How can a safety pro keep up with all that stuff? Podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but to, to, to answer that question, Sam, uh, how can the safety pro keep up with that? It, it's really just getting familiar with the changes that, that are happening, understanding what the trends are, just like we would, you know, understand trends of, of incidents and, and near misses and accidents and fatality ratios, you know, understanding the trending and how our, our profession is evolving. Um, you know, it's no longer um, some companies are no longer, you know, behavioral based. And and that's what, in, in a sense, I kind of got brought into mm-hmm. and, and grew up on and, and you know, as a, as a safety professional. But now it, it, it's about understanding your worker, understanding, you know, the the human aspect of what's going into your company. Um, and, and being able to to have that compassion and, and enlightenment and coaching to be able to help somebody succeed, to help your company succeed in, in all reality. Right. And kind of speaking to that hop stuff, I mean, you, you're, I'm, I'm assuming that you're seeing a bunch of the stuff. Are you seeing it kind of pop up in the workplace at all yet? Uh, now, yes. Uh, over Over the past, about the past years where I've really seen it start to to take form and and a lot of companies are now starting to move into, you know, caring about their greatest asset, which is their, you know, their workers, their employees, and, you know, understanding that it's not always the worker's fault. It, you know, that human error is going to happen that and incidents are going to happen, but understanding the, 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 you know, the organizational process and, you know, the processes that we put in place uh, might not, be the right ones for that particular job and not trying to fit the, the individual to the job, but more or less the job to the individual. Right. And I think it's interesting because I I can tell um, um, when you're talking about your experience and you're talking about your years of experience and all that stuff, you and I are are very similar. Um, And I can, I can hear you talking about coming up in this behavioral based school of thought. Um, And I came up in that same, that same time frame. It was mm-hmm. right there when all the behavioral based snake oil salesmen were out there selling observation programs and safety culture stuff and all, you know, all this different stuff. Um, so I was, I was right there with you. Um, I, I can think of, you know, eight, nine years ago, uh, it was insane for a company to not have a behavioral based observation program. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yep. That was like the cutting yeah. edge thing. Yeah. And then, and then with that, having that connection, cutting edge behavioral based program and you know you get that ingrained into you mm-hmm. and you know it's all about you know how many observations are you making uh you know throughout the week and then it became you know looking at stats and and, yeah. and you know it got really really diluted um, right you know which is a good a good thing that it did get diluted because now you know you can look at the hop side of things and and really really focus on on the individuals and, and the people that are yeah you know doing the job and putting their lives at risk day in and day out. Yeah. And I, you know, I think, I think that's where, where the issue was is that um, most folks, I mean, most organizations kind of a lot of this behavioral based safety stuff approached it from this. Well, if you care more and you coach more, then stuff kind of works itself out. And that was, that's a really convenient answer for the company because it goes, well, it's not air bad. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it puts more of that more and more of that responsibility on the pointy end. Um, but when we started to really wake up, but I, uh, the big thing for me was, is that coaching is always a great thing. That's never a bad thing, right? If you're, if you're right. actively coaching and actively caring for folks, I just think we already do a really good job of that probably. Right. Mm-hmm. And the, the behavioral based piece, they kind of took that and said, well, now if you trend these, you can forecast and predict and you can prevent and it still kind of aims back at prevention. So um, like I said, I think it really did get way diluted and fortunately has started to kind of peter out <laughs> mm-hmm. over the past few yes, years, it has. at least away from that piece of it. Um, I'll, I'll throw that out there that usually some of the more uh, rampant kind of BBS people will say, well, you don't care about people then. And that's not true at all. <laughs> right? I mean, coaching is great. You know, if I go out in the field 
and I see a behavior that's not so great for sure. We're going to talk about that. That's kind of a duh, oh, yeah. <laughs> a duh thing. But where I've seen a lot of these kind of observation programs start to go now is kind of seeing that behavior as like the bright and shiny thing that will catch your eye and mm-hmm. then really training folks that are observing to have a conversation beyond the behavior. Going, yeah. hey, I, I get that. That makes sense. If I was in that situation, I would have probably done the same thing you just did. So if that made sense to you, that will probably make sense to a hundred other people. So where's that coming from and, and how do we fix the part where all that made sense? So it, yeah, exactly. It, it's interesting to see it start to take that evolution. Yeah. And, and getting into, you know, again, that human behavior and, you know, looking at the behavior and it's not, Oh, okay. He's doing something unsafe. Let me document this on the card and put it inside the box. Mm. So that way our observations number are, are up. Now it's, you know, let's look at the behavior and, you know, ask him the question. So that way right. he can help give us the answer of where his mindset was, right. you know, Oh, well, I was thinking about, you know, going right versus left. And, you know, with that being said, I was also thinking about, you know, my divorce that I just, you know, happened and, you know, now I'm not going to be able to see my kids and, you know, having that compassionate side and being able to get down to the nitty gritty of, you know, before the mistake comes about understanding his behavior of, and, and his emotions or her emotions the whole thing, right? Yeah. Getting, yeah. getting all the way down to the whole context, I think is important. And I think that's been a big shift is that um, when I was kind of growing up in this, in that kind of stuff, it was really viewed as well. Somebody didn't do something or they did do something. And that's why something bad happened. And if we would have been there coaching it, or if we'd have seen it in the trending, then we could have stopped that bad thing from happening. And it, back to that's a, the whole overfocus on prevention is a whole nother hour conversation, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but I think that was a big move is understanding that, you know, that stuff is warm and fuzzy and it's, it's good. I'm not so again, coaching is great, but it's not a really strong defense. No, right. It's not, it's not no, a real barrier not. against anything from happening. We can't coach harder and not have nice, robust barriers and expect stuff to change. No, I can, I can coach the same, you know, guy or girl, uh, out in the field, you know, five days a week. And on that sixth day, something can still happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, on on the same, I can coach him on the same thing five days a week, and on that sixth day, something can still happen. Yep, it, it's just understanding the you know the the hu- putting that human factor to it, and, and yeah. I, I mean you're 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 the guru on on the hop, and I, just what I've noticed in 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 the safety world and out in the like construction field is just getting to know your you know getting on not so much a personal level, but gaining that rapport and, and showing that you are actively caring about the well being right. of, of the individuals it goes a long way. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when you, when it goes to trying to kind of build an environment of honesty, right. To where folks mm-hmm. can, can bring stuff up and you can learn. And, and that's the whole point. I think that, that you can use observations. I know we've kind of got down a little bit of a BBS kind of rabbit hole here, but I, I think certain elements of BBS can play and fit into human and organizational performance as long as they're applied through the filter of, of those principles. Um, yep. Observations being one of those things is that rather than worrying about the big data and all that kind of stuff out of observations, we know our leaders are going out and they're talking to people all the time. And the vast majority of those interactions never get documented. And usually the ones that do get documented aren't the real ones that are happening <laughs> Anyways, right. right? I right. can I can predict the trend of anyone's organization that is listening to this right now. It is barrier tape, PPE, and housekeeping. That's your top three yep. trends right now. I promise you. Right now. <laughs> right? Yep. That that is exactly <laughs> correct. <laughs> so to me, the way they can play nicely is getting away from that whole we're going to try to forecast and trend and predict. And again, just kind of seeing those interactions as the opportunity to maybe see a bright and shiny a behavior and understand that it's coming from somewhere. And how do mm-hmm. we fix that, that context in which the behavior is, is really coming from rather than seeing the behavior as the kind of end-all be-all where when we go out and we coach and we see that as the fix, it's like, you know, it's, we're, we're really treating a symptom rather than treating a disease. We've got to get down into the, to the real nitty gritty of where that stuff's coming from. And there's all kinds of stories out there on that. I won't, I won't bore everybody with my stories. But even the situations where you hear people like, yeah, they're standing on a table to change a light bulb. Well, maybe we don't have enough ladders. That might be where the behaviors come from. You know? yeah. <laughs> Super yeah. kind of dumb example, but that's a good example, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, yeah, that's a great example. You know, 
the guys don't have what they need to be able to perform their job safely, then of course they're going to look for the next best thing and have somebody look out and watch out and say, Hey, you know, whistle when the safety guys coming around. Right. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's an, it's inevitable. If you don't have the stuff there for the people to, you know, do what you're telling them to do and ask them to do safely. then it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a lose, lose. If, if anyone out there was tells me that they have not stood on a chair to change a light bulb because they did not have a ladder when they first moved into their home, I will call them a liar because I promise you they probably stood on stuff a whole lot worse than chairs. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I, then, I know, you know, go, growing up, I, 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 you know, we used to put the Christmas lights on my mom's house, mm-hmm. you know, back when I was living with my mom. Um, but it was on the AC unit with the chair, right. with the bucket. And yeah, it, it's just, it wasn't common sense, but it was well, feasible and it made sense at the time. I, I, I grew up and I was born, raised and grew up, in the southwestern portion of Virginia, in the Appalachian Mountains, I can tell you all kinds of things about. I have a degree in redneck engineering. I can, <laughs> I can, I mean, yeah, I could, I can talk about ladders in the beds of pickup trucks and all kinds of fun stuff, <laughs> and to reach places we needed to reach. You know? <laughs> yeah, I used to live in Virginia myself, yeah. Lynchburg. I know, I know Lynchburg well, man. Virginia yeah. is a pretty state. This is a, this is a plug Very for a plug for the state if you've not been you should go and go during the fall yes. and look at the leaves it's super pretty but yeah i think i think it's under it's it's really important for folks to start to dive down into that piece of understanding where does behavior come from and those are great examples right i, I can i can think to a, a very specific situation in which i stood on a dining room table there i'm gonna get a bunch of hate mail to change a light bulb because i did not have a ladder in my house and it was dark so i was going to do what i needed to do <laughs> to, 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 mm-hmm. to fix that granted Later, I bought a ladder. I don't have that problem anymore, right? And I, I think right. that's what we have to do as organizations. Um, even down to the situation where, you know, I've, I've had this conversation. I don't mean to rant on ladders that much. But where somebody will say, well, we give them ladders. But maybe it's like a mile over that way, right? And, mm-hmm. again, human beings, we have to start to understand that people are wired a very predictable way. Yeah. And if you make things really inefficient, we don't do that stuff very well because we're wired for efficiency. Kind of back to that really – kind of primal part of our brain we want to conserve calories because conserving calories means survival because back in the day we didn't know when we were going to get our next meal right so we want to we're wired for efficiency and that's a great thing the majority of the time because we usually get it right and we're usually super efficient at stuff until all of a sudden we're not and that's where we have to as organizations uh, and really as safety professionals and leaders and managers have to start to go out and find those situations where we go well no that's not just dumb he, he, he's standing on that bucket because the ladder's like all the way over there, and yeah, a quarter of a mile down the, the down bucket, the road, you know. right? And the bucket's right there. Yeah, I probably do the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you, I mean, it, it's 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 the the human behavior to, like you said, to be more efficient. You know, with okay, am I going to take the ten minutes to go walk and go grab that ladder, mm-hmm. or I'm going to going to just stand on this bucket to do this, you know, two minute job that I have to do right here. Right, right. Yeah. But if he had a ladder that was closer and then readily available, well, then he would end up getting a ladder and being safe and more efficient. Yeah, and I, I always, and I, I'll just, I'll, I'll get off my ladder rant, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll sum it up with this: is I've, I've viewed our our role um, as organizations, as safety practitioners, as leaders, as managers, as, as whoever you are, kind of interested in safety stuff and affecting change in organizations really as this is we have to make it easier to be safe than it is to be unsafe. If you really want to affect stuff and really, um, I won't say fix human behavior because that's dumb, right? But if you want to make, if you really want to have build some robustness in there, you have to make it easier to be safe than it is to be unsafe. And that's easier said than done. That means a lot of ladders. (laughs) This yeah, could, it could be yeah. a lot of right? <laughs> You have to make it so easy to do. I don't even want to call it the right thing, but but the better thing. Uh, you have to make it so easy to do that better thing than whatever kind of workaround or or whatever there or could be there. You just kind of go, well, why would I do that when this is so much easier? Yeah, I think people exactly. kind of fall into that natural path then. Well, that's yeah, cool, man. I think that's awesome matters. that you're seeing it, seeing it kind of pop up out there. I think that's what I've seen. It's probably over about the past two years I've really seen human and organization performance start to really kind of get cracking in industry, at least general yeah. kind of out into probably moving from 
um, kind of more aviation and kind of all those kind of industries that have maybe had it for a little while. Mm-hmm. And I've just now seen it start to manifest in construction quite a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, cause in, on a construction site, you, you, you tend to be more behavioral based. Yeah. Uh, just it's, because again, it's, it, it's a shorter term. So you're yeah. trying to get those unsafe behaviors and it, it's hard. And I, I, you know, that's why I think it's interesting. Every time I see it, when I go to a construction site or, or I'm working with construction folks, I think it's re- always really interesting because that's probably the hardest environment to implement it in and to see, um, cause that's what I first heard, uh, from some from companies that shall remain nameless. Uh, but <laughs> like, this will never work. It's construction. And it actually works pretty good once you get it going. Yeah. Um, you can quickly, you can actually quickly build an, an honest environment um, because that's the fear, right? You're dealing with a transient workforce. Um, yep. I, I grew up um, in industry bouncing around from, from nuclear site to nuclear site working outages. So I was nowhere for more than six weeks, maybe. <laughs> you know? right. I mean, I might be back, yeah. but I wasn't there for very long. And that's what was viewed as a really hard audience to kind of roll this stuff out with, I think has started to, to be viewed not, as not so hard. I think it actually works pretty well. If you kind of bring them in and start them early, start with that right language with, you know, we don't view you as a problem to control, right? We view you as a solution. If you see stuff while you're here, tell us, let's help us fix stuff, help us learn. And you know, what's crazy is when you throw that out there, people will. I think that's the interesting part. When you ask, when you throw those questions out there, people will start to tell you stuff. (laughs) They get brutally honest. We got to back that up if we want them to keep telling this stuff, but they will. Yeah. Oh yeah. And definitely if, you know, if, we're able to back it up and, and, and give them the, the tools to be successful where well, they're going to be successful. It's, yeah. it's, you know, that's just the nature of the beast of, of being a safety professional, of being a company that understands the, the human and organizational performance part of, uh, you know, their, their assets that they have, which are their people. Yeah. Uh, so, for, for, for folks that are out there, I apologize. I live in downtown Phoenix, Arizona. So there's a, a ambulance that just went zooming by. So everybody probably got to hear that lovely, <laughs> that lovely sire and the nice little ambiance in the background there. <laughs> it's good. No, it's perfect. <laughs> well, so we, we, we talked podcasts. We talked down the, uh, we jumped down the hop rabbit hole a little bit. Everybody got to, got to know Pedro a little bit, which is super cool. Um, how can people find you out there? We mentioned the podcast, but what about social media, website, anything like that? Yeah, people can find me on on LinkedIn, uh, Pedro Maciel C H S T. Uh, you can find me on obviously the podcast, the X Factor Safety. Wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find me on Twitter. I'm also on Twitter. It's at Safety X underscore Factor, uh, and then on Facebook, uh, I do have a a page on Facebook. Uh, it's the X Factor Safety. Uh, page and then the website the factor safety.com awesome awesome um you guys listening guys and gals everybody out there you definitely need to go check out Pedro. you need to check out the x factor safety it is a phenomenal podcast it's it's excellent man I, I have to tell you it is excellent i was diving into a couple episodes of it uh just the other day um, so make sure you go follow along with pedro on linkedin on all those social media things follow along with the podcast uh, any, any words of wisdom for folks out there? I always, I always screw this up and I say any final words and people go, <laughs> so like, well, what's, what's going to happen? But no, <laughs> any, any, no. any, any words of wisdom for folks out there before we go? Any words of wisdom? Um, be open to constructive criticism because you will get it as a safety professional, uh, whether you're new in the industry, whether you're transitioning from construction to general industry, whether you're, you know, starting your own consulting business, you're starting your own podcast, be open to constructive criticism because it's not all always going to be bad. And what you get is going to help you grow as a person. Mm. That's, that's, those, that's great because I found, um, I think there's an amazing community out there, especially in and around safety kind of podcasting. And, and I hate to use the I word, but influencers, and mm-hmm. and social media folks. I mean, I think that's one of the coolest things that I've found so far about this whole kind of journey that that most of us are uh, we're kind of on together, right? We kind of share the same space. Yeah. Um, is that folks are are very quick to say, "Hey, that was dumb. You should probably think about that." 
<laughs> and that was that's a good, and I mean that in a good way. Like they're really quick yeah. to say, "Hey, um, what about this? Hey, did you think about that?" Or, "Hey, uh, you need help with this? You need help with that?" Like, you know. And so I think it's really neat. I think that's a really, really awesome, awesome thing to throw out there to folks: is be open to that constructive criticism. Be open to help. Folks who are willing to help you. Folks are willing to jump in and 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 guide you. Um, not yeah. all that criticism will be true. Not all that guidance will be good. That's up to you to sort out what's what's true and good and just and all that kind of fun stuff. But, yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, man, oh, man, this was a blast. I enjoyed having y'all. I'm going to have to do this again soon. Oh, yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me on, Sam. I greatly appreciate it. No, man, thank you. Well, I don't know about you, but I think that was pretty awesome. Pedro is super, super cool. He's a great safety professional, awesome person to talk to. Make sure you follow along with him. I just found out the other day that he is part of the Safety FM family now, too. He's a he's a podcaster and all that kind of fun stuff. So he has the X Factor of Safety podcast. So head over and check out Pedro. Check out the podcast. Check him out on LinkedIn. All that fun stuff. That's all I've got for you today. Make sure you head over to the website, www.thehopner.com. Follow along on all that social media crap. Send me an email to sam at thehopner.com. Shoot me a text message. Leave me a voicemail. Um, send me in your questions. We've been doing all these Q&A episodes, so that's kind of a blast. Make sure you send those in. So that's it. Until next time, this is Sam Goodwin, The Hop Nerd, signing off. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.